Good morning and a blessed Sunday to each and every one of you, God's children in Christ Jesus. Today's sermon is His Mercy Never Fails. Today I'd like to discuss God's mercy, feeling this is important that there are those out there who feel at times he doesn't show it. Because the way the world is today, many think he has ceased in showing mercy. They feel abandoned, left alone in this dark and broken world. People feel, think, and say, if God loved us so much, then why hasn't he fixed the world? Well, I'm here to not only tell those people, but you as well. That kind of thinking is far from the truth. It's totally false. If God did not love us and he had no mercy on us, he would have ended it already. To say God has mercy, but in your heart you feel he has shown no mercy is hypocritical. Not to mention to say that he goes back on his word, which he doesn't. His word always comes to pass. It's always true. Coming to mind here is a statement to show you how God has mercy on each of us and how he shows mercy. And this statement comes from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now here's a question for you. If God had no mercy, then why did he do this? Why did he ask Jesus to come down and die for us? He gave us Jesus because of his mercy, and to prove that his mercy doesn't fail, and that he does, always did, and always will love us. With God, love and mercy, they go hand in hand. One cannot exist without the other. Now, once again, the world is like this because you ask, why is the world like this? It's because free will. Many of us out there, have chosen not to have him in his heart, not to accept Jesus in his heart. Now, I have accepted him in my heart after the dark times, and he was kind enough to take me back. I see a lot of other people turning back to him, asking him to take him back in his heart, asking for forgiveness. And that because the world is brighter. And God loves that. When you ask him and accept Jesus to take you back into his heart, he allows it. He wants that. He wants you to come back to him. And you can see the light shining through many people out there. So, yes, the light is in the world. And it's making it even brighter in this broken world where there's so much darkness and hatred. There's so much violence. And many are finding their way back to him. Now, that's mercy, because if the Father's mercy failed, then why would he allow us forgiveness? Why would he allow us to come back to him? That wouldn't make sense. God always makes sense. He's not chaos. To prove to you a little further that his mercy never fails, just take a look at all the miracles around you. The leaves change colors during seasons. Every wave and ripple in the ocean or a lake is never the same. The birds still sing in the sky. Many species of birds and colors. People still having children bringing love into the world. People still showing kindness, rescuing animals, rescuing each other blessing each other. And I can attest there are people out there, especially recently, that have blessed me with many things, especially their prayers. People letting people cut them in a line. 
people buying other people food, people buying other people maybe a coffee, people being kind to each other. Those are miracles that God is allowing us to not only see but to witness, not only for ourselves but for others. Let us also not forget the promise he made to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Noah, even Jesus. The list goes on. The Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy or forget the covenant with your forefathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. This comes from Deuteronomy 4, 31. When we pray, no matter how we pray, he hears every word. So you could be praying in the bathroom, in the shower, in bed, on your knees, in the car. You could be praying while you're watching TV or maybe just sitting in the dark, maybe in the park while you're walking. You pray when you even spend time with him alone. Not asking for anything, just being in his presence. That's kind of praying also. And when you cannot speak the word, the Holy Spirit takes our prayer right to the ears of God himself. And he knows our prayer because he knows each one of our hearts. Now, he doesn't answer us all the time when we expect him to and when we need an answer. But he does answer us. And the timing that he answers us is the perfect timing. Because he's awesome. I always say, God is not good all the time, and all the time God is good. I say, God is awesome all the time, and all the time God is awesome. Good is an understatement for the Lord. He's awesome. He's beyond awesome. And he'll answer us when he feels the time is right. Faith we all need it, myself included. We need to work on it. Some of us have faith that's stronger than others. We all have faith. It's just that some of us <coughs> have it more stronger. So we all still need to continuously work on it. We're going to take another look at Psalm 6-9 to show you how he hears us. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayers. <clears throat> if we really study and meditate on God's word, then there should be no question on how his never-ending, never-failing mercy exists. Jesus also tells us of his Father's mercy by letting us know that in his Father's kingdom, there are many mansions, and he's going there to prepare a place for us. <clears throat> so there's more proof. If God didn't have mercy on us, didn't show us mercy, then why would he allow us in his kingdom? Here's another look. We're going to give you more proof. I'm going to give you a lot of proof today on his mercy. Psalm 5-7, I, by your great mercy, will come into your house. In reference, will I bow down toward your holy temple. <clears throat> so when we go to our mansion in the Father's kingdom, in our house, we will bow down before his temple. We will bow down before Jesus and before God in both their very presence and live for eternity in their awesome light, where there is no pain, there is no sorrow, there are no problems. There is only joy, peace, and contentment. That's God showing mercy. The truth now to you has been revealed and proven more than once. You are never you never were, and you never will be alone. 
His love and mercy to you go beyond human comprehension. Jesus is the only one next to the Father that can describe their mercy to you. So as we leave today, I really like you to go out there and show others mercy as the Father has shown us mercy, as the Holy Spirit has shown us mercy, as Jesus has shown us mercy, as they still do. Forgive a person if they're angry. You don't know what trouble they're going through. Be kind. It doesn't cost anything. Smile. You just might make that day. A lot of people out there are angry at the world. A lot of people out there want to see others fail because they don't want to elevate themselves even more. But that's their choice. Don't let them dictate your life. Allow the Father, allow Jesus to dictate your life. Let them guide your life. They, God created you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he had and was there for the blueprints of all of creation. So why not let him dictate your life? Naturally, the people that want to see you fail, you got to pray for them. And I can tell you from my testimony, it's hard to do, but I still do it. And it's really not for those people, it's for myself. It releases the burden off me as it will release it or for you. But it also, you're asking God to show them his light. So, because he wants them to turn back to him. So he can give them a new heart, a new start on life, a new life. He can cleanse them from the old and make them anew again. So it's our job as his disciples or his warriors or soldiers, whatever you want to call it, to try our best to shine his light upon those in the darkness. Now, I've said it before in other sermons, and I'm going to say it in this one. If we really love God, not as much as he loves us, of course, we have to try to really get people as much as we can, to do our best to get them to go back to him, to turn back to him. So be that lantern of his light upon the hill, shining his light to, through the darkness to those in the valley to guide them back to the light. Show them that it's not always easy to walk the narrow path through the narrow gate, but the prize is well worth it. The journey is not always pleasant, but it's well worth it. And it's worth it because on that journey, you walk with Jesus. And not only do you walk with Jesus, you walk with God. He walks behind you, ahead of you, and beside of you. Be his disciple. Be his warrior. Show the world his love. Let him shine through you. Let him speak through you. Now remember, he also says, don't be an enabler, meaning don't be a doormat. But you must direct them with kindness and sternness. Always be nice, loving, but firm. Be kind to each other. Spread the peace. Spread the love. Come together in unity. Not only for the nation, this beautiful country of ours, but for the world. Most importantly, come together for Jesus. He came together for each and every one of us, and he didn't have to. So we should at least be kind enough to return the favor. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I'm Reverend Tony. Thank you for joining me today. And please, continue to walk in the presence of God. 
you'll be glad you did. We'll see you again next time. Have a blessed, joyous, and safe rest of the weekend. And keep shining his light upon those you come in contact.